So copy trading is is big. It's always been big in forex, and it's getting uh, incrementally bigger in crypto. And what copy trading is is where an experienced trader uh, gains access to a platform, and the client allocates certain amounts of his or her account, and those trades are made automatically. Right. So they just basically copy what the experienced trader is doing and you see a lot of groups trying to emulate that in the crypto space through APIs and and whatnot. So just focusing on Bitcoin, let's talk about the the legality of copy trading and what what you could in theory have to do in this exceedingly exceedingly uh, gray gray area. So when you're talking about copy trading, okay, and you're talking about Bitcoin, let's go from the premise that Bitcoin is a commodity, right? And let's let's work from the Forex example where copy trading sort of originates from and then and then we'll do we'll go to the equity side, to the security side. Um, generally speaking, if you are going to do copy trading which contemplates automatic investing, right? So investing where the the trades that the client makes are generated by the the software by the signal provider right by the quote unquote experienced trader um, generally speaking you need to be registered as a commodities trading advisor and that is because you're providing investment advice regarding the um, investment or trading of futures products right so this is governed by the CFTC not the SEC and so you know, in most cases, to become a CTA, you have to one um, register, obviously, with the CFTC, but also register with the NFA, the National Futures Association, and that would provide you with the ability. Um, and this is sort of the the hook, if you will, the ability to have the automatic trading. Right. In the absence of the automatic trading, you may have to be something called an introducing broker, but going from you know the basis that you're trading off an API and how these these work well it looks like you know from my pr perspective in my opinion that you would have to be a licensed uh, commodities trading advisor so and that process isn't terribly difficult to to go through but it does require um, registration with the CFTC and again the the NFA there are some exceptions to that and that's when your your trading algorithm or your your trading your signal provider if you want to call it that is numerically based right where it's based on a formulaic capacity or um, general numeric qualifiers right if the price of bitcoin futures reaches six thousand dollars it's an automatic sell something like that something that's nuanced and driven by less by the intuition and knowledge of the signal provider and more so from particular formulas or um, static market conditions right so when you compare you know when the question becomes i want to manage you know crypto wallets right what what do i do can i do it well i think by the strictest interpretation i think you need to become a commodity trading advisor if you want to manage these wallets and that's because bitcoin technically is a commodity now last week we had the sec come out and say that they're not going to regulate ethereum so the question becomes does ethereum fall back into the definition of a commodity and generally speaking the cftc has considered ethereum to be a commodity since its inception so i, I think that's the direction we're going right at the end of the day bitcoin has to be something Ethereum has to be something, right? It, it's it's a digital asset, and if it's a currency, then derivative products, which would be right, what you see on like a, akin to like a forex, those are commodities, and those are going to be regulated. So I I think the short answer is if you know you want to do managed wallets, if you want to lock in with an API and do copy trading, which is effectively what a managed wallet is, then I think that that spurs the need for CTA registration and NFA registration. Um, you know, it's it's probably not what a lot of people want to do, but I think at the end of the day, that's where it's going to go, and it's the only way that you can look at it and truly say that you're insulated from 
from protect you know potential regulatory liability if you have that that uh, that registration. Now, the opposite end of the spectrum is sort of if you're going to trade ICO tokens that may be securities, because then you're looking at a registered investment advisor registration, which I'll talk about in a, in a future a future vid. But uh, for you know the short and quick answer of what do I need if I want to you know manage wallets through either uh, through you know uh, an API or some sort of copy trading format, um, the answer is a CTA and NFA registration. With the exception being that you know you have some sort of algorithmic or um, you know automatic trading system that's predicated upon um, you know a computer system and arbitrarily defined by numbers. So check me out tracyfirm.com if you have questions. This area is like rapidly evolving. You've got people coming out and saying that things are and aren't securities or commodities every single day. So what I'm telling you today could be completely worthless tomorrow. Hopefully it's not, but uh, yeah, hit me up, at at tracyfirm.com, bitcoin-lawyer.org. I will talk to you later.